I am Dwayne, and with me is... Uh, I'm Dan. <laughs> and yep. uh, we uh-huh. are working on a uh, Angular app. It's a shared calendar. Uh, we're using Angular, we're using TypeScript, we're using Node.js and Express for the backend, and MongoDB. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the last thing that we worked on is we added the ability to add events to the calendar. Um, so today, I think we should show events in the calendar so you can see what you've added. Yep, um, I think that's a great idea. So I'm going to log in and we can see what we've got. We've got a calendar here. You can navigate. It always shows you today. And then when you click on any particular day, you can add an event for that day. Our um, time selector is not the best, so at some point we'll have to come back and, and refactor that. But Yeah, that's pretty ugly. Yep, but it'll work for now. Um, let's see, do we have any events in the database? Uh, I think we have like one or two. We do, yeah, we got a couple events here. Oops, all right. So... And that's on the user object, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep, there's an array of events on the user. So we got a name, a description, a start date, and an end date. So, um, <clears throat> I think right now, uh, currently as it's written, um, you can only add an event to a single day. You can't have it extend to or last multiple days. Um, right. I mean, I think the schema supports it, but the code does not. Right. Um, so I guess, do we want to make a decision now to allow it in the client? Or do we want to like allow that later and just kind of get stuff rolling still? Uh, I think that's a separate task on the board. So I, I think we kind of talked about this last time, and we decided that we would do it uh, do it later. Okay. All right. <clears throat> cool. So um, in order to display an event, we probably want to have some sort of like like badge or something on each day. Um, okay. There could be multiple events on a day as well, so they'd have to kind of stack up. I wonder what's okay. a good way to show that. So uh, when you when you said badge, it, it it's kind of interesting. Like, are you thinking just like a, a little circle with a number in it, like kind of off to the side, or, or... Um, you know, I don't know. I, every calendar okay. app that I've used has like a just like a line that goes across with like a description or like a name of the event. Yeah, um, I've seen that too. But I think our calendar is a little small for that. Yeah, and I wonder. So... I and mean, we could make it bigger, but I think that'd be a little bit of work. And I, I kind of like the badge idea because it's just kind of, uh, you, you know, you have events there, then you can click on it for the details. Yeah. Well, see, okay, the downside of that sort of thing is at a glance, I can't tell That's true. what events there are on any given day. I have to, like, mouse over them all. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, so do you want to stack it, like, uh, Google Calendar and just see how it looks. I yeah maybe I don't know. Um, it sucks that there's a already a bunch of calendars out there and they all do pretty much the same thing. It would be nice not to like copy them all, but on the other hand, maybe they're all doing yeah. that because that's like the only way to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, hmm. hmm. If the user isn't going to have a bunch of different unique events, maybe we could have like colored icons and then a legend somewhere. But that's kind of that seems like it's too busy. Yeah. So yeah, I think maybe to start with, maybe we just stack them, and we we show as much text as we can. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got our calendar component. Um, each day is just a div here. We probably want to make like a day component. Is that true? Hmm. Um, I don't know that we need to. Like, I think it's we really just need like a, a div or a span inside of here. Yeah, I just don't want it to get too busy. Uh, hang on a second. The stream died. Oh no, it didn't. Okay. It must have been my my computer. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's start without a component, and then if it gets to be too much, then we can always break it out. Sure. Okay. 
Um, okay, so what we need to do is for each day, we need to basically get a list of all the events that are in that day. And now, what is a efficient way of doing that? Right, because right now, when we log in, do we, we get all the events down, don't we? Like, we, we're yeah, sent all the events? Okay. Yep, I think we get everything on the user. So in the user service, there's going to be cached user, and cached user should have an events array on it. Um, Which, honestly, I don't like that. No. Like, I think it should be a separate call to get all the events. Like, it should be, like, get all the events for this for month. Or... Oh. Oh, I see. Or maybe um, even, like, the a span of months around it, so it, we're not fetching everything at once. But... Yeah, I guess there's two sides to that argument. Um, so one is, you know, there's too much data, potentially, and, and we'd be fetching, like, a billion events. Um, yep. The other side is, maybe it's not that bad. Because um, each event is going to look like this. And so... How big is it? Like, uh, like if we convert it to JSON, how many bytes is it? Good question. I'm not really sure how to it's do that. It's definitely less than 100. So it, if I had to guess, it's probably close to, like, let's say, 64. I have no idea how to, like, dump this out. Well, you could just log in through the browser, right? And look oh, at the JSON. True. Yeah. All right. So if we assume that each event is like 64 bytes, although there's also a text and description, so maybe it's more. Oops. All right. So we've got user, this guy, response. Oopsies. 188 bytes. Right, but that's that could increase a lot depending on the description and the uh, the name. So, but yeah, maybe maybe for now, uh, let's just yeah, we can always work it out later. If we do want to break it out, though, we'll have to make it its own collection, probably. You think so? I think it would suck to like in the server like get the user from the database and then parse through the entire array and like sort all the data and like fetch um... well i mean we wouldn't have to like i'm thinking uh that basically would have when, when we log in it would just get the user object without the events and then we'd have an events api to get the events for that user so how would you parse out the events that you want uh so couldn't you do like a time range limiter in mongo can you, can you, I don't think you can return just like individual elements of an array, can you? Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's good. Well, I thought you could. You I guess could, it's worth looking into. You can but... do like, um, um, you can do a projection of specific fields, but all of the events are in one field. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, because I'm think I was thinking of like doing like a where clause where the time range is between these, but it's really going to return the whole user object. Yeah. So but, okay. we'd have to make a decision that we're we're going to put the events in their own collection. Which I mean, maybe yeah. that's, maybe we need to do that. Right off the yeah, bat. I know we talked about it last time. Or <clears> so the reasoning ago. last time was basically. Um, you're never going to deal with individual events. You're always going to deal with like all the events for a person. Because like if you like if you befriend someone and they share their calendar with you, they're sharing their whole calendar. So you have their right. ID and you say, "Give me this user and all their events." It's never going to be like share this one event. But now that right. I say that, maybe it should be. Maybe you should be able to share just an event. Yeah, because it could be that like you invite me to a dinner party or something, but you don't want to invite me or show me any of your other events. Right. Yeah, so that makes sense. So maybe we need to to switch it up now then and put um, events in their own collection. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Better to do it now than later. Yeah. It's okay. You know, so I'm actually work. just gonna rename this. Ugh. Do we want to call it something other than event though? 
Um, just trying to think of what other synonyms we could use. Like there's meetings. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I got I to Google synonyms for events. Occurrence. Occurrence. Affair. Incident. <laughs> we could call our app uh, oh. Affairs app. Yeah, there we go. Share, A shindy. Share affairs. Share affairs. <laughs> A shindig. Ah. Shindigs. That's a catchy word name kind of thing. We yeah. could call our app Shindig. Shindigs. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Now these, okay. So jolly, I've never heard of jolly as a synonym for an event. No, me neither. That's weird. I like shindig, wow. but I also don't yeah. want to be typing shindig all the time. Really? I think it'd be a fun word to type. <laughs> like how often can you ever type shindig? Like this is the only time. True. Whoa. Okay. All right. You want to do shindig? I'm fine with it. Okay. Let's see if I can get away with mass renaming user dot event into shindig. <laughs> That's a fun little word too. I like it. All right. Replace and then user event. Into shindig. And then user event shindig. All right, and I think that should be it. Did you? Is there like a schema? Um. Yeah. So shindig controller. I gotta rename the actual files. Oh yeah. Shinding. <laughs> Okay, so event, there are no occurrences of event here. Route, what is it not like? Shindigs controller, oh yeah. Shindigs controller. So why, that's kind of weird. Like why do we, why is it plural for the controller but single for everything else? <clears throat> uh, we had that discussion from work ages ago and I don't exactly remember why. Hmm. Um, like I can see the plural because it's the collection. Oh right, because of... you're not just dealing with a single shindig. This is all of right. the shindigs potentially. I don't know. There was right. there was some reasoning that I no longer remember. Okay. Shindig. Well, it's it's fine. We'll we won't be too picky. What do you not like about shindig? I think this is actually just uh, VS Code being poopy. So I think I just have to close it and open it again, and then it hmm. figures out where everything is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So now we've got shindigs. Um, right. And so instead of having it inside of here, so a user is now just an ID and a name. Yep. User controller. No shindigs here. Okay. Uh, oops. Okay. Now a shindig schema um, needs to have a user ID. Yep. And everything else is the same. Oh, should I call it owner ID, creator ID? Um, for me, user ID makes sense because you know which collection it references. True, that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> so here's something, not to be too picky, but we have user underscore ID, then we have start capital date. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, I could go either way. Uh, I just like consistency. Okay. So if we're posting to... Okay, so in our server, we said Shindig routes is based on user. I don't think we can do that anymore. Or so now... Actually, I think we need to... Like, when we create it, I think... We have to pass down the user sense. ID. Yeah, which I, I do kind of like this route for that, though. Why? Um, well, actually, maybe not, because you're only ever going to create an event for yourself. Uh -huh. It's not like you're going to create it for some other user. So we should pass the user ID along in the request. OK. Yeah, OK. So this is going to be shindigs. And then posting here is a create. Yep. Cool. Um, and then create request body. So this should still work. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's why is it? This. No, it's not user model. Yeah. Do we have, we don't have a model. Um, let me just copy this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you go back to server TS real quick? Yeah. So what is, do we still need line 30? Probably not that whole route. No, we don't. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Um, does this seriously not do anything? Uh, it just exports the model. So then you can execute your, like, uh, create on it, right? Your mongoose queries? I guess. I, I guess at work we've always, like, made wrappers for that. I don't know if we need to. I guess we don't really need to. Okay, so now instead of a user model, we're doing this. Um, do this. Yep. Right, I, mean, I think that'll work. This. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, so shindigs are their own collection. Um, do we break anything else? Maybe. Okay, so there's a user service that has a search, logout, post login, sign up. So that's. Yeah, I think all this is still fine. Yeah. So we just have. Shindig service. Well, we have user event service. We can just rename oh, it. Oh yeah. yeah. Did that just rename itself? What the hell? Uh, no, you renamed it earlier. Oh, you're right. I oh, I did a, a search and replace. Okay. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, PSC is not that smart. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're doing a post to Shindig. Is it Shindig or Shindigs? Uh, it should be Shindigs. It is, okay. Yeah. All right, we do not need user service anymore. Nope. Okay, Shindig now also has a user ID. Okay. 
We're not using moments. Oh, I forget. Did we do we have to do anything with that string to convert it into a, an object ID, or does Mongoose do that automatically? I want to say Mongoose does that automatically. Okay. Oh, you know, actually, excuse me, server side, it'll be an object ID, and then when it gets sent over the wire, it becomes a string. Client side, it becomes a string. Okay. Okay. Um, so theoretically, click day, oh, the add event dialog component. Okay, so this does the create, and we're missing a user ID. Yep. Do we have a user? Window user service. We should have the cached user on the user service. Yeah. Okay, so theoretically, it should all work. Yep. Okay. What does so that say? It's try. hard it's to read. Older. What was that? Okay. Okay, so whatever a sweet event. Starting at 4. 22 p.m. and it's going to end at 8:44 p.m. Should we uh, rename event on the client side to Shindig? Yeah, we don't have to. Let's do it. Let's uh, let's be consistent here. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think event is more user friendly, but I mean, we're just kind of having fun with this. Mm -hmm. So we got a 404 for Shindigs. Oh, did I need to restart the server? Probably. Uh, okay. It should have picked it up automatically, though. Uh, it didn't look like it was watching the server. Hmm. Is it npm run dev? Is that the one that does think, node one? I don't think we made that. Oh, okay. Or did we? I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think what is the response? I think it's the first one. Yeah, we got something. All right, so let's take a look in here. We should have. Is there a refresh? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, refresh. Yep. This is wicked slow. I don't know what. Uh, a... I'm surprised you haven't installed Robo 3T yet. I... <laughs> Today's stream is what I'm doing. When I'm doing that. Ah. Okay, sweet. So uh, it's saved in its own collection. Awesome. Okay, so now what we probably want to do is um, have like search functionality where we can search for shindigs for a user for a, a month. Okay. Now, when you say search functional functionality, it's really just kind of like this was this would be the API call that we make when we log in and are rendering that month. Right. Okay. So when you go to a new month, it'll fetch all the events for that month and display them. Okay. Okay. So um, we'll go to the Shindig service and we'll make a public search user ID. Um, do we want to just do like a date range or? Yeah, I think we should do a date range. Okay. Um, and this is a array of shindigs, and it's actually uh, that's, an yeah, it's an observable. observable. Okay. Um, you're going to use the template. Oh, are you? What? 
the the template string. It the, my resolution is so bad I can't really see oh, it. Yeah. Like it's like bad ticks. Okay. Yep. Um, user ID and start date. Um, I don't need to. Oh, I do need to encode your eyes this because there's spaces in it, right? Um, well, I mean, it's a moment, so we can format it to what we want. Yeah, how do we want to pass this? So it should be year, month, day, right? Because I think if you do a new date on, on that format, mm -hmm. then it can reconstruct the date. Okay. So we can verify that real quick. Yeah. All right, what did you just verify? Uh, so if you do like new date, then you pass in a string with four digit year dash, two oh. digit month dash, two digit day. Right, okay. Um, so I don't I don't think you need to do that. No, you I already have a moment. Right, so, so how do we output the moment in the desired format? Uh, isn't it just start date dot format? Ah, okay. All right, and you want year, 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 year. Dash MM dash DD. Is it capital D's and capital M's and Y's? I think I think so. Okay, we'll find out. All right. Um, Do we need so to encode the URI though for that? Not anymore. I thought there was okay. going to be like spaces and stuff. Okay. 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 What is your malfunction here? Boolean is not assignable to. Why does it think it's a boolean? It's a good question. Turn this. HTTP.get takes a URL and options and returns an observable. Yes. Does it not like the casting? I didn't I've never seen this before, but it's on here. Okay, and you can try getting rid of it. Yeah, I mean, in in my experience, we always or I oh, always had it to returns use it. an observable object. I think we actually just want to return like observable any, and then we have to figure it out. I don't think we did that on um, in our project because, like, when uh, I think we do actually. I think all the all these return any's. No, really? Yeah. I gotta look. These do, except for these that return an observable user. Yeah, like we should be able to type it because then on, on the inner function, the subscribe, uh, you, you'll know like what object type to use. So can, it, can you put turning the response body as a JSON object? I guess an array is still a JSON object, right? Uh, I think so, yes. Wow. I think you're right. Like I, I'm looking at our uh, at our code, and it's all observable. Any mm -hmm. okay? We can figure it out later. Yeah, that's fine. If we decide that we care. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we've got a search that searches for start date, end date, user ID, um, and then in here. We get to the next month. Calculate days, I guess, could do it. It's kind of not really what it's for, but... Right, the calculate days, it basically creates that, uh, that array of days. Yeah. We'll just do that. Yeah. 
I think that should happen uh, before we calculate days. Okay. Because then in calculate days, we have the events, those events to the, the day. Oops. All right, so... I guess I really could just do this, huh? Okay. Um, oh, it's convenient. All right. So we need to pass in the user ID, we need a start date and an end date. So... So, okay, that's interesting. Um, this dot month dot day. Okay. Day of first, but that's the day of the first day, so that's like Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh, okay. All right, well, we have at least this dot month. Right. Yeah. So I think, does it moment have like start of month and then you pass in the step month? Start of month. Okay. So what does that return? Does that return a moment? It does. Okay. Okay. That may or may not do what we want. I think it's moment that moment. Oh, yeah. You couldn't type it out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, so. I, I don't know that we should do it this way no because days is what gets passed into the template and i think days should have uh should reference the shindigs so like we'll fetch the shindigs uh -huh. and then we should call the calculate days and then calculate days in that loop on line 36 uh -huh. when we push the day uh where we have the date in there, in that right. object on line 37, we should also add the shindigs to it. Does that make sense? So like the shindigs for that day. Yeah. Um, but we got to get all the shindigs first. Yes. So I'm going to just put them in here. Okay, but it doesn't need to be public. Oh. Like it, when, when you made it public, I was thinking that you were going to pass it into the template. No, I just, okay. I just blindly did it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. I apologize. Okay. All right. Um, so we got all the shindigs. Um, so now that we have them and we call calculate days. So days. Where do you call fetch for this month? Oh, uh, it's going to be right here. Okay, so in the subscribe for and that, it's going to be here, and it's going to be here. So I think the fetch events for this month, mm -hmm. inside of that subscribe, we should call calculate days. Um, we could, or we could return this uh, subscription. Okay. Um. I mean, then again, it does make sense to just do this every time because then we can eliminate yeah. it from here, from here. Yeah. Okay. And then also we need to add this to clean up. Yes. I wish Angular could uh, kind of track that for you a little uh, bit better. Let's 
kind of annoying. Okay, so calculate days. So we're adding an object here that has a date and then also the events. I mean, shindigs. Yep. And then... Actually, probably what we want to do... Day... So... I just realized something. Huh. So we're actually showing the previous month in the next month, but we're only fetching the shindigs for this month. Yeah. So do we Wait, what do you want mean we're to... showing the previous month and the, and the next? Oh, yeah, you're right. So do we want to show events for those days or no? Like, I think it's fine to just move forward should. as is. Do you I think, think so? Should. Yeah. Okay. So should that be like a separate task or do you think that's easy to do now? We can do it now. We just extend the start date and, and end date. Okay. So let's call this fetch events. Boom. So um, now, how do we get it? Yeah, good question. Um, so we know we always have forty-two days shown. Okay. So subtract. Hmm. Let's see. Twenty. <laughs> I don't think we want to do that. Why not? Subtract 20 days and add 20 days? Yeah. Oh, so we're just fetching... A little before and a little after. We could do like 10 and 10. Okay, so that's that's kind of cheating. I was thinking that we would fetch exactly what we're, what we're showing, but yeah. this this is fine. Yeah. We'll... Okay. Yeah. Um... And so we need to figure out which events take place today. Yeah. Um, so maybe instead of just cramming this array in there, what we really want to do is make a object where the key is a date and the value is the event. And then this can just take all of the the events for that day and just cram them in here. Okay. Okay. Or we'll use a map, I guess. Yeah, so, okay. That makes sense. Um, and it's going to be a moment and a shindig. Uh, I think it's going to be an array of shindigs. Yes, yes. So I don't think we need line 20 anymore. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we're going to make a new map and then we're going to loop through. All the shindigs. Yep. And uh, okay, so we need the date. Um, so shindig dot start date. So this is actually a date, right? Or is this a moment? It's a moment. Um, that start of day, so const date. So this is interesting because we have a start date and an end date. Right. So if it spans multiple days. But it can't we're... until we decide that we want to go that way. Yeah, I, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Um, okay, so then we're going to pull the array 
of moments, or I mean, uh, um, of shindigs. Yep. Digs equals this. Digs that push. Oops. What is it not like? Oh, that's not how you do this. No. <laughs> we're, we're not in Java. We're in uh, TypeScript. Do you still do any Java coding? No. I don't know where that came no. from. <laughs> <laughs> you dug deep. Yep. All right. So now we're pushing Shindig into there. And then now we got to put it back. So uh, if there is no array for that date, would digs be null or undefined? Oh, it could be. Um, equals this or this. Okay. I wish um, with this map there was a way to like do this all in one line. Yeah, would be nice. Okay, so now the map is populated mm -hmm. theoretically, and here, well, I mean, now that we have the map, do we even really need, I guess it would be nice. Yeah, need what? Okay. Um, need this array on the day, because we can just look up. Yeah, I think we should. Okay, yeah, it'll be a little cleaner in the template, huh? Yeah. Uh, right. So we should pass in that event map into calculate days, I think. So I, I don't think we really need to make it public on line 18. Like we don't even need to store it as like a, a component, like a top level. Um, why not? Oh, because we're just calling it here? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's true. All right. You can kill that line. Yep. Okay. All righty. So, um, event map dot get this. Line fifty-two, isn't it? Um, fifty-two digs. Yes, but is, I have to get the date first. Uh, but isn't it already there in line thirty-eight? So I think we need to extract the date, like whatever we're passing into date, uh -huh. out into a variable. Then we use that in both the day and this event map dot get. Oh, um, right. yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, ugh. <laughs> what's, ugh? I don't know what to call it. I guess date? Yeah. Or I could have just used day, day dot date here. Date. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that we would actually get the shindigs before this, before we declare day. Mm -hmm. And well, then we, we just do, do date, too. date, shindig, shindigs. Sure. We could do that. And then you can get super fancy and just do date, comma, shindig, or shindigs. Ugh, I don't really like that. I hate that <laughs> Okay, so like, now we have yeah. a day. Oh, we got to edit to days. Did I just delete that? I did. Yeah, you did. Okay. All right. So now, maybe for now, what we could do is in the template, we could just render the shindigs at length for yeah. the day. And if it's greater than zero, then we, we uh, render the number. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It looks like an error. 
right. 404 for shindigs, user ID, start date, end date. Oh, right. We didn't actually oh, do that. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Shindigs controller. So let's make a search. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. Um, um, so I think we need to pass in... Yeah, user ID, then start date, end date. But those need to be converted to dates, or no? Yeah. Okay. Mongoose doesn't do that automatically? I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Okay. Hey, you know, now that I've been sitting here for a while these lights are pretty bright yeah told you yeah <laughs> maybe i'll point them up next time yeah either point them up or if you can raise them higher and angle them down maybe that'd be nicer i don't know uh, yeah i think i have maybe a foot a foot of clearance but yeah i'll play around okay so oh so let's uh, it's a promise void because we're not actually returning it. Uh, we're, right. We're sending right. it. Okay. Yeah. So that may or may not work. Uh, we need to add it to the routes. Yes, right. And then you need to restart your server. Okay. Get. I see all of your windows. Yep. Is it is it done? Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, great. Alrighty, what do we got here? Cannot read property Some... length of undefined. Yes, yeah, so oh. we need to put a span on that. Oh, actually, it should have been. It's if the um. We should have done like an or, right? No, it's if uh, this doesn't if this exists. I can but that, I right? should. Actually, I think you might be able to, yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, uh, we the have month events. looks weird. Yeah. The month is really weird. We messed something up here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, calendar component. So what have we done? What did you do? What did I do? Day, date. So, data add. Where do we? Okay. Let's uh, let's debug this. Yeah. So fetch events. <laughs> Start date is some sort of moment date. Okay, December twenty second. End date is. That is that right? Is that 10 or 20? I can't tell. It's 10 days ago. It's not December 22nd. Uh, well, 10 20 days, days from the beginning of the month. Oh, okay. Is that right. even right, though? December 31st. So there's 31 days. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. So fetch everything. And I got yep. Notion digs. Is that right? We made some, right? Uh, can we look at the request? Yeah. So we're sending, uh, yeah. So start date is 110. And the end date is 120? 
Is that right? Oh, no, it's start. We did like end date, end date or something. Okay. Uh, start date, end date. Go into the service. End date, start date. Huh. That looks fine. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, unfortunately, I'm not in there anymore. Let me do it again. Okay, so start date, end date. Start date is January 10th. That's not right. No. Is the so subtracting is... and adding actually modifying this dot month? I wonder. I bet it is. Yeah. Okay. Um. So do we just do like a new moment? Yeah. On... Yeah. Okay. Can I do this on one line somehow? Yeah. Just do uh new moment that moment, then wrap this step month in that. Right? What? What the uh or maybe it's just moment I think it's just function. Moment. Yeah. Okay. But do you do a new on it or do you just call it function? Oh, you're right. So like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's worth a shot. Yep. All right. Start date is December 22nd. End date is yeah. February 10th. Perfect. That sounds right. Right. Yep. Okay. So shindig still zero. What the heck? We asked for December twenty second, February tenth. That looks right. Okay. Yeah. So it could be. It could just be the server side didn't do it right. Yep. Um, this moment was created, or this event was created January 29th. So it's in there. Oh, wait. I didn't query that right at all. It's um. Let's see. I just said start date is this, end date is this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we actually want, um, we only care about the it's... start date, right? And it has to be. Well, no, we care about both. So, yeah, this should be, was it dollar GT? Uh, greater than or equal to. GT, yeah, okay. And then the start date is less than the end date, end date. is less than or equal to. Um, yeah, I guess so. Oh, I see what you mean. I think you're right. I think you, we do only care about the start date. So then the start date would also have to be less than the end date. So then we would also want end date greater than or equal to start date as well, right? I don't know. I Maybe we don't care. At least not yet. Like, not until we get the the dates, like the, the multiple days. Yeah. I think for now we don't care. We just do start date greater than this start date and then end date less than this end date. Well, I, th I think it's still start date less than or equal to end date. Right. Why? No. Okay. We yeah. Only we no, only care this about, is fine. Yeah. 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 This is fine. We may have to tweak it later, I guess, but. No, I we certainly not. will for like once we we add the the multi days mm -hmm. or the the event spanning multiple days. Okay. Still got zero. Really? Uh, you didn't restart your server. That's a bit of a bother. Yeah, we got to fix that. All right, let's run. Okay. Okay. 
start date dot start of is not okay so it got in there let me did we get anything we did nice okay <clears throat> so oh is it because okay I so know, it's not it's a moment it's just a it's actually just a string which okay that makes sense so we need to momentize it yeah does momentize a word? Sure. All right. Good. I wonder if it we just now. do this. I think is so. It, is it smart enough, you think? Yeah. I've been pretty impressed with, with moment. Moment, yeah. Nice. Is that the right date? I think so. Yep. OK. And everything else should just work. Okay, so where's the length? Where's the one? That was for the 19th, right? The 29th, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, so... we didn't get anything, but it didn't blow up, and we got the right number of days. The counter looks like itself again. Yeah. So, what happened here? Um... Yeah, let's set a breakpoint at line 40 and see what's going on. Yeah, we're going to hit it like a bunch of times, so we want it like a conditional breakpoint, if possible. Okay. I suspect we'll never hit it. Oh, true. Yeah, because, well, no. Is it because the dates aren't or... right? I bet it's something like that. So actually, let me yeah. kill this and just uh, let's see what event map looks like. Okay, there's Zero. no there's oh, one in there. Moment. Okay. So date that start of day. What is this? So it should be adding a, a day to itself. Every every time we loop. And yeah. so then we're we should be comparing uh, the start of the day. Uh, to to the key, which is also a start of a day, so it should be fine. I wonder if it's doing like an actual equality check instead of like, uh, are the dates equivalent? Oh, like you think it's comparing objects? Yeah, it could be, like memory addresses. Yeah, it could be. Okay, well we know so, that we know the day that we want, right? Because event map. What if has... we? What if we just format it as a string then? Okay. So like just the the y y y m m d d. Yeah, let me let me see if this works real quick. Sure. Oh damn it! I don't know if I can do this for the cancel. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> Is that going to work? Nope. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let's not put moments as the key. Okay. Uh, so, then. So, instead of date, we're just going to do date dot format. Format. Yep. And yep. event map 50. is. 50. And then also up on uh, 29. Okay. It kind of sucks. I mean, we can extract that out into a, a string or something, but yeah. this is fine for now. Um, you said 20 what? Uh, 29. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you. And then on line 53, you missed a closing paren after format. Oh, thank you. Oh. Okay. I have a good feeling about this. Oh, we already hit it. All right. 
There Sweet. It is. One. One event. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So now, instead of just displaying the length, um, let's just put it in a div. Okay. And for each, actually, we're going to do each one is a div. Yep. Um, Uh, data, yeah. And we need a container around this. All right. And then this is shindig.name. Okay. Hey. Cool. Look nice. at that. Um, so let's add a class and then, yeah, we'll uh, you missed an S there, bud. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we should make uh, rounded borders too. That's a hideous color. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess you could make the text white and it wouldn't be so bad, but I'd still, not do red okay. like that. Yeah. It's so like this. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. It's so like uh, like this one. Yeah. I'd still do red, uh, white text though. Okay. And they do uh, a border cut, uh, border radius. Okay. Four pixels. Four pixels. What color? Uh, you need border radius, not border. Oh, radius. yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Right. I'll make it rounded. Yep. Gross. Yeah, it was pretty gross. Add padding. Probably have to keep uh, it small, so like two pixels. All right. Okay. All right, and then we could ellipse the uh, the text. Yeah, we're gonna have to because I suspect that if some event, if that label was longer, uh -huh. then the day would stretch. So I think we have to do like an overflow hidden. Oh yeah, you're probably right. <clears throat> We're going to have to sort by time as well. Yep. Nice. They both showed up. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to also figure out like a height ellipsis or yeah. height overflow. We're not going to have any room for events. So we're going to need yeah. to make the calendar way bigger. But then like... But I, I think we... Didn't we say like we wanted it to be kind of res responsive? So, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll have to get clever, mm -hmm. but I I I think there's ways to do that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but yeah, I think this is this is good. Yeah, so it's uh, eight thirty, which I guess is our stopping time, unless you yep. want to continue a little. No, I gotta okay. get going. All right, so we made some excellent progress. Uh, you can now doing show events on calendar. Boom. Yep. Um, hmm. Definitely need some prettying up. Yeah. But uh, basically, it's there. Nice. Yep. Cool. Very cool. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, as for streaming again, what uh, what day is good for you? I think Wednesday you probably work for me. Uh, let's see. Wednesday. Let me check my calendar. Wednesday should be fine. Okay. Yeah. So tentatively Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. Yep. Cool. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.